Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus, blessed Savior, He's worthy to be praised. <laughs> I've discovered over the years in my own life, the more I praise the Lord in my own life, the more I raise the Lord in my life. I still don't feel the greatest. I decide to come on in anyway and feel loopy at work. I'd rather be loopy at work and get paid for it and take days off and still be loopy at home and still getting paid for it. So, plus I owe it to my 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 director, my to management, to my coworkers. To I remember when I was in the streets, when I was a druggie, a drunk, uh, when I burnt the counter at both ends, when I smashed the clock, and regardless of how I felt, I would still get it in for the devil himself. Then once we get saved, as soon as we touch the Bible or go to Sunday school or worship service, we got the nerve to get sleepy. Pain and all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Are you the family member? That's the greatest problem for the family. This is not a justification. This is a notification. Are you the family member? That causes the most problems in the family. I'm not talking about just every now and then. Every time there's a problem. Every time there's police involvement. Every time mama cries. Every time daddy cries. Every time a sister or brother is in pain. Every time somebody's at odds. Every time there's a fight or rigmarole. Every time there's some type of BS or SB. <laughs> it's you. My, my dad used to say the greatest family is a family 3,000 miles away or the family out of town. My dad used to say, I don't know where he got it from. You can't pick your family members like some people. Pick their nose, but it don't mean you won't have to deal with some boogers. It used to be when grandma, wella, granddaddy, willow, madre, padre, mommy, daddy passed away. It would cause other family members to get closer together. Years ago, I started using the term that the funeral was becoming the family reunion for all races. People you haven't seen in decades or years you haven't spoken to. You see them while you stand there holding a little piece of tissue at mommy's funeral, at daddy's funeral, at grandma, granddad, at sister, brother. And it's a shame when the same person causes the same pain in the family. I'm not talking about just drug addiction. Heroin or crack or cocaine or meth. Uh, that, that is a choice. That's a self-inflicted wound. That's suicide. I'm talking about the person. Sometimes a family might have two people in the same family that every time there's a problem. I'm not talking about being in need. Every time there's something wrong. I'm not talking about car breaking down. I'm talking about the person that upsets mama, daddy. The person that disrespects mama, daddy. The person that disrespects and hurts you is always the same person. And in this instance, are you the family member that causes all the problems in the family? It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame that, you know, we, we need to get back to the table of the family. When I grew up, my mama and daddy and all eight of us was at the same table. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless me. When some of y'all grew up, everybody was in the same house. Now, uh, granddaddy in a nursing home. Now, grandma in assisted living. Now, granddaddy in his own place. Now, grandma in her own place. Now, mama gone. Now, daddy gone. Now, baby girl number one in this room. Baby girl number two, you don't know where she is. Baby girl number three, missing. Baby boy no, number one, baby boy number one in this game. Baby boy number two in that game. Baby boy number three on heroin. Baby girl number four on milk. Hey, we need to get back to the table of the family and table our concerns. As I leave this beat, I'm in pain in my neck and back. And I'm fighting pain on the inside and on the outside. I'm in pain in my heart and mind uh, for the family problems that exist all across this land. I'm in pain in my mind and heart for the 
broken families that don't seem to know how to get themselves or to pull it back together again. Uh, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall and all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Uh, they should have took Humpty Dumpty to the Lord. Um, they should have took Humpty Dumpty uh, to the to the hill, set up on the hill. They should have took Humpty Dumpty to Jehovah Rofa. They should have took Humpty Dumpty to Hashem. They should have took Humpty Dumpty to Elohim. Uh, they should have took Humpty Dumpty to Jehoshaphat. Uh, they should have took Humpty Dumpty to El Shaddai. They should have took Humpty Dumpty to El Elyon, the most high God, high God. Hmm. Are you the family member? I mean, we don't use family member anymore. We use dismembered, remembered, uh, uh, gang member, political party member. What has happened to the family member as I leave this beat? Are you the family member that causes all the problems with your brothers and sisters? Are you the family member that causes all the pain with your mom and dad? The Bible says we'll honor our mother and our father uh, so that our days will be long. My mom and dad, you said, disobedient child won't live his or her days out. I mean, you might have some long days, but they're going to be painful. Every time I've buried a mama or dad or grandmother or grandfather, I see people hanging on the bottom of the, of the casket or the coffin as it goes into the ground. Those are the most guilty ones. When I buried my own mother standing in the pulpit, coming from John, the 14th chapter, I saw all the screaming and gnashing of teeth. I knew who had mistreated mama, and I knew who had treated mama right. And I saw them put on shows and acts and uh, stomping their feet and like their feet were on fire. That's just guilt. I seen all the tears and the uh, handkerchiefs and Kleenexes balled up and coming out of pockets. But I knew who mistreated my mom and my dad. And, and I thank the Lord that me, mom, and dad parted on good terms. Uh, I didn't owe no apologies to my mom and dad. Um, I didn't owe no money to my mom and dad. Uh, treat your mother, treat your father, treat them right. Uh, treat your brothers, treat your sisters, treat them right. Uh, there's gonna come a day when you're gonna have to put them in the ground. Uh, I buried my mother. Spoke at a funeral, December 23rd, 2011. And then I buried, uh, Mm. My baby brother, uh, November 10th, 2012, spoke at his funeral. And then after that, I buried my oldest brother. Mm. Died on Christmas Eve, 2013, and I buried him December 29th, 2013. Three funerals in three years, and it changed me on the inside. Honor your mother and your father so your days will be long throughout the land uh, love your sisters and your brothers as best you can uh, sometimes we have to love people from afar uh, guard your mind guard your heart and everything will be all right oh yes it will mm -hmm. god bless you god keep you let's get back to the table of the family if you can't get along just pray from a distance and do the best you can i'm not preaching separation I'm not advocating ostracizing or, or being estranged. But all the time, enough is enough. God bless you. God keep you. God bless your mind and heart, your health and strength. God bless your mother and your dad. God bless your sisters and brothers. God bless you. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Peace. One.